how to contemplate calamity. The waves of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. This God, His way is perfect. 2 Samuel 22, verse 5 and 31. After the loss of his ten children owing to a natural disaster, Job 119, Job said, The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 121. At the end of the book, the inspired writer confirms Job's understanding of what happened. He says, Job's brothers and sisters comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Job 42, 11. This has several crucial implications for us, lessons for us here at the dawn of a new year. As we think about calamities in the world and in our lives, like the massive disaster that occurred December 26, 2004 in the Indian Ocean, one of the deadliest natural disasters on record with 1.7 million made homeless, half a million injured, and over 230 killed. Lesson number one. Satan is not ultimate. God is. Satan had a hand in Job's misery, but not the decisive hand. God gave Satan permission to afflict Job, Job 1, 12, 2, 6. But Job and the writer of this book treat God as the decisive cause. When Satan afflicts Job with sores, Job says to his wife, Shall we receive good from God? And shall we not receive evil? Job 2.10 And the writer calls these satanic sores evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Job 42.11 So, Satan is real, Satan brings misery, but Satan is not ultimate or decisive. He is on a leash. He goes no farther than God decisively permits. Lesson number two. Even if Satan caused that tsunami in the Indian Ocean the day after Christmas 2004, he is not the decisive cause of over 200,000 deaths. God is. God claims power over tsunamis in Job 38, 8 and 11. When he asked Job rhetorically, Who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed? Psalm 89 verses 8 and 9 says, O Lord, you rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. And Jesus himself has the same control today as he did once over the deadly threats of waves. He rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased. And there was a calm, Luke 8, 24. In other words, even if Satan caused the earthquake, God could have stopped the waves, but he didn't. Lesson number three. Destructive calamities in this world mingle judgment and mercy. God's purposes are not simple. Job was a godly man, and his miseries were not God's punishment. Job 1, 1 and 8. Their design was purifying, not punishment. Job 42, 6. James 5.11 says, You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But we do not know the spiritual condition of Job's children who died. Job was certainly concerned about them. 
Job 1.5, God may have taken their life in judgment. We don't know. If that is true, then the same calamity proved in the end to be mercy for Job and judgment for his children. This double purpose is true in all calamities. They mingle judgment and mercy. They are both punishment and purification. Suffering and even death can be both judgment and mercy at the same time. The clearest illustration of this is the death of Jesus. It was both judgment and mercy. It was judgment on Jesus because he bore our sins, not his own. And it was mercy toward us who trust him to bear our punishment. Galatians 3.13, 1 Peter 2.24. And be our righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Another example is the curse and miseries that have come on this earth because of the fall of Adam and Eve. Those who never believe in Christ experience it as judgment, but believers experience it as merciful, though painful, a preparation for glory. The creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, Romans 8, 20. This is God's subjection. This is why there are tsunamis. But this subjection to futility is in hope. Lesson number four. The heart that Christ gives to his people feels compassion for those who suffer, no matter what their faith is. When the Bible says, weep with those who weep, Romans 12, 15, it does not add, unless God caused the weeping. Job's comforters would have done better to weep with Job than talk so much. That does not change when we discover that Job's suffering was ultimately from God. No, it is right to weep with those who suffer. Pain is pain, no matter who causes it. We are all sinners. Empathy flows not from the causes of pain, but from the company of pain. And we are all in it together. Lesson number five. Finally, Christ calls us to show mercy to those who suffer, even if they do not deserve it. That is the meaning of mercy, undeserved help. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, Luke 6, 27. This is how Christ treated us. Romans 5.10, dying for us when we were his enemies. By that power and with that example, we do the same.